Guess it's time to find the Dust Buster. Two trees reached out to me and asked if I wanted to take a look at their new CNC, the TTC 450. Oh, I'm sure the wife is going to love the noise this thing is going to make in the garage. Well, when Two Trees reached out to me about this CNC machine, I have basically no experience with CNCs, so this would be a good learning curve for me. But I am familiar with lasers, and this is running a um, Gerbil board, so hopefully this will give me a little bit of a leg up, so to speak, on how to get this thing up and running. But let's go ahead and see what this machine's all about. First and foremost is the price. Currently it's $5.99 on their site, and of course that is subject to change. And actually for a CNC, this is not a bad deal. Because it's 460 by 460 by 80 millimeters. And usually machines in this price range are smaller. It has a collet of a ER11. So you could actually expand your end mills, so to speak. It has a nice sturdy frame. It is 40 by 80. Hmm, very stout. It's got a touchscreen with a 32-bit board and you could possibly uh, expand it to a laser module and even a rotary. It has a nice flat MDF waste board with lots of mounting points to secure your work. Speaking of securing your work, you get six clamps to hold down your material. And no need to uh, wonder how high your material is because it has a Z probe that's included. Plus, it has limit switches on each of the axes. Two, in fact. No belts on this. This is all lead screws. It has accuracy of 0 0.0025 on the Z and 0 0.01 on the X and the Y. And all cables on the X and Y are managed through drag chains. Make it nice and tidy. And it has dual Y stepper motors. Well, why? Because it does. And that is a brief overview of the TTC 450 by Two Trees. And if you're looking, links will be provided below. The box is actually pretty darn heavy. And um, everything is well packed. And there's quite a lot of pieces in this box. It might be wise to do an inventory of everything and compare it to your builder's guide. Because there's a lot of components here. A lot. And I used a power screwdriver on this. And it still took me about three hours to assemble. So, if you're going to use an Allen wrench, uh, it may take you a little bit more time, or maybe not. The biggest issue I had with this was the side, uh, the left side to be exact. The drag chain just had a finicky way of fitting it. There is a build video on the SD card and on their YouTube channel, and you have the instruction booklet. As mentioned, this has a 3.5 inch touchscreen display. It's, um, Basically to navigate uh, the tool head around and um, to execute a, uh, a job, so to speak, on here. Yeah, that was a fail. Once assembled, <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty stout looking machine. Now, two trees didn't leave you high and dry with some carving bits here. So you get a V-shaped cutter, a milling cutter, um, you get a 6 millimeter collet, and you get 10 30 degree carving cutters. Now I'd like to introduce today's video sponsor. They've been sponsoring my channel for over a year. Their support helps make this channel possible. And today's video sponsor is PCB Way. Are you looking for a PCB? Well, look no further than PCB Way. They're their one-stop shop for your PCB and manufacturing needs. You want to just generate a quote? It's pretty simple. Then you could do a standard PCB, advanced PCB, you do a FTC rigid flex PCB, you can do some assembly, and you can also do SMD stenciling. But that's not it. They also offer CNC and also 3D printing. <laughs> it's literally a one-stop shop for all your needs. If you're looking for a little project to do? Look at the shared projects. And you can go ahead and basically order a whole kit and just do a little project that someone else has created. It's a great community section for to share your ideas and have other people build the projects that you are working on. And I would like to thank PCB Way for sponsoring this video. 
Now let's continue on with the Two Trees TTC 450. Since I know nothing about CNC, I attended YouTube University. James Dean designs YouTube University. I basically followed all of his directions on how to set it up and, um, you know, get it going. And the software that he recommended as well. Now I am using the software also that James recommends. So he's recommending from Inventables Easel. Unfortunately, this is a cloud-based app and there is a free version available with limited functionality. It does connect to a wide variety of machines. However, I could not get it to connect to the 450. And plus the Pro offers a subscription. Then you will need a way to send the G-code to the machine. James recommends a program called UGS, and I found it to be rather uh, easy to use as well. So that's my go-to now. James also recommends CarveCo, and this is also a subscription-based and with several tiers. It's definitely premium-based, and you would also have to use some type of G-code sender as well, and I used UGS for this. Well, I'm a total rookie, so let's see how well I do. And first I just decided to mess around <laughs> and I did uh, one of their little files on their SD card and dragged the bit down and mill down and I started to carve. This was on a piece of scrap wood and then I actually did tripod. Not too bad for my first engraving. I will give myself a pat on the back. And this is pine so I believe the cut was only about Three, mil, three or four millimeters deep. Next, I was a little bit more ambitious. I did a uh, relief here. <laughs> and uh, it's not actually deep enough to do a really good relief and because it still left some of my laser engraving behind. But you get the idea. And since I had a piece of oak laying around, I decided to give this a try. Tripod's Garage Sign, established 2019. Since I'm new and don't know the limitations of the machine, I just went with the recommended settings and easel for this uh, end mill and um, took about 10 hours. I can't control the speed of the spindle, so this is what it came out with. Um, as you can see, you can see all the carvings in it and it came out not too bad. But I did notice a little issue. Now let's cover that right now. I noticed a little bit of wobble on the Z. You can see it right there. It's not supposed to do that. And yeah, clunk, clunk, clunk. Huh. Wondering if I could fix this. The gantry here rides on some V-rollers. And I took apart the Z. Look at that. We got three eccentric nuts. Go ahead and just uh, move these to tighten it up. And that took care of the problem. It's not a part of the instruction manual though. So that was a good find though. So keep that in mind if your Z wobbles. And then I just assembled it and did another sign. Centered it a little bit better this time. And uh, actually, it came out a lot better. Now, from far away, you will not be able to see it. But uh, definitely when you get close up, you will. So let's get a closer look. The one on the left is with no Z wobble. The one on the right, you can see it just it's wobbling a little bit, especially along the T on the left side of that T. So, you may want to keep that in mind when you are uh, looking at the machine and final setup. But after that, I'm pretty happy with the outcome. Of course, as I learn, I expect to uh, do even better the next time. Now, this doesn't have a dust collector, <laughs> so you, at least not yet. So you're going to have to clean it and do a lot of cleaning. And I noticed something here when I was um, cleaning it. <laughs> All the extrusions have, well, shrapnel in it and it's a pain to clean these extrusions so i was wondering why i have so many of these strips laying around and <laughs> what strips are you talking about oh nope. let's take a look there's a whole package of these extrusion covers and they only show you to use it on the bottom 
Nowhere in the manual does it tell you to do this. So I'm showing you how to do it right now. You cut the pieces to length, and you just put them in all the channels that have nothing running through them. And this will help um, eliminate that. It's pretty darn easy. Um, and I kind of messed up that one here. Let's tuck it back and then snap it in. Yep, just cut them to size and just push them in. It's, you know, your thumbs will get a little bit of work out. But once you get the hang of it, look at that. It's really easy to get in. Definitely would have been nice for the instruction manual to say, hey, this is why you have so many of these. Now, if you have that uh, dust collector and you have this, you will have a lot less cleanup on your hands. Now, I did both extrusions down here, and, uh, and then I also did them on top of the gantry. There's plenty more of uh, spaces, but those are the two that I, or three areas that I did first. Also, along the y-axis, it has holes, and those holes are to let the debris fall right through. So don't forget to clean up underneath your machine as well. And this was only after about three or four um, engravings. So you can imagine how much there would be <laughs> if you didn't clean it up. Now, as far as I know, uh, Two Trees will be offering uh, end mills, flutes, whatever you want to call them, on their website. But I went ahead on Amazon and purchased some. And um, I suggest that you also look at different ones as well. Now there's a spindle upgrade, dust collector, CNC rotary, and laser module that's coming for this unit. So you'll definitely be able to expand the capabilities of this machine. I have to say that uh, my first experience with CNC has been very positive. Out of the box, everything worked as expected, especially for someone as new as me. We definitely covered a lot of the nice features this machine has, but there's also some needs for improvement. We covered the, the Z, the Z wobble, so to speak, and I showed you how to fix it. This machine will vibrate a lot, and with that, screws it definitely came loose. So it would be nice if two trees, you know, supplied some Loctite, because I could tell you that there's two or three screws that just fell out, and I know that I secured them pretty darn tight, because you don't want them over-tightened in um, aluminum. The wires on the left y-axis, yeah, it is kind of like riding along the frame. And we have um, an afterthought of the control box. <laughs> Hopefully I've given you enough information if this is the right CNC for you. I really appreciate you tuning in to Tripod's Garage, so please have a wonderful day, evening, or weekend, or whenever you decide to watch this video. Thanks again for tuning in to Tripod's Garage.